Christian brothers and sisters. Welcome to our internet worship service. We hope that you will be edified by participating in this service this morning and pray that you'll uh, remain through the rest of your week um, in a way that will serve the Lord. If you would take your Bibles and turn with me to Psalms chapter 59. Psalms chapter, I'm sorry, 95. Psalms chapter 95. And we'll read the first seven verses. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. If you would bow with me, please. Father, thank you this morning for this opportunity to worship and to serve you, Father, with song and, and uh, preaching and scripture reading, giving you back of some that we have earned through this week and especially father to fellowship with jesus and with you and with each other at the table our lord set for us we're grateful father that you have established for us an assembly we pray that you will help us to overcome the difficulties that have kept us from gathering together soon so that we can be back together as one family we love you father and we we pray that this worship service will be pleasing in your sight it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Before the uh, communion service is uh, presented, we're going to sing Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sent Him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the sisters. Uh, if you happen to have your Bibles with you, I'm going to encourage you to turn to Romans chapter 3. We're going to 
take a passage out of there this morning um, in preparation for the Lord's Supper. And I want to begin this morning um, by making the statement that we who are about to partake of this communion are truly a blessed people. Um, we're blessed with what I would consider to be the ultimate cure, um, the cleansing of the power of the blood of Christ. This really soaks in when I consider the pandemic of sin that has separated man from God since the days of Adam and Eve. And when I read what I find in Romans chapter, 20, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, um, this really starts to soak in. But I'm going to begin with verse 21, if you want to follow along, and then read down through Romans chapter 3 a little ways. It says, But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this includes you and me. Previously separated from God by sin, now together again through the blood of Christ. Saved from the scourge of sin and whole once again with God, our Heavenly Father. We truly are a blessed people. Let's pray together before partaking of the cup. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we know you laid the foundations for our salvation long before we came along. Lord, you had a plan for the people whom you loved, for the ones you would call. Lord, we're here this morning to recognize the once and for only sacrifice for atonement that comes through your Son. And Lord, as we partake of the cup at this time, may we do so in humble adoration both towards you and for your son who has provided this avenue of reconciliation to you it's in jesus name we pray amen pray one more time for the cup. Our Heavenly Father, without the shedding of blood, there is no atonement for sin. Lord, thank you for offering your Son to be this, this sacrifice for each one of us. For loving us when we were unlovable, for saving the people who couldn't save themselves. It's in Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. God has indeed blessed us. Let's pray for the offering this morning and um, continue to contribute towards the work of the Lord here in Salina and by whatever method you've been doing for the last several weeks. I want to thank you for that. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing that comes by being a member of your kingdom. Lord, you take care of us in ways we don't even know and oftentimes take for granted when we do know. 
Lord, please bless our offering now. Lord, for it comes from within. Uh, Lord, and help those that utilize it to do so in a manner that furthers your kingdom in the best possible way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. To start our discussion this morning, I'd like to begin in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope. This morning I want to talk about Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah... They were good examples, and good examples for us to follow. But as with all people, Abraham and Sarah, they were still human. Uh, in fact, when we go to Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, we're going to see this very human side. And it's something that we can learn from and apply in our own life. But let's go to Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, before we continue. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she thought she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. If there's anything that this chapter teaches you and I, it is a very important lesson about patience. Because impatience can lead to rash decisions. And that's exactly what we see Sarai doing here. And we see Abram doing this same thing. And we'll get to those points here in a few minutes. But I want to look at a definition on what does it mean to be rash? Well, according to Webster's 1913 Unabridged Dictionary, rash is a sudden action. It's quick. Uh, it's hasty. Especially when we look at definition number three, Webster's defines it as over hasty in counsel or action. Uh, precipitate, resolving or entering on a project or measure without due deliberation and caution. As we can see in this chapter, and as you continue in this chapter, this rash decision brought consequences. For example, in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 3, Sarai caused Abram to stumble. Now, Abram was suffering from the same fear and concern. We see this in chapter 15. And so, what Sarai caused in Abram was a stumbling block, and unfortunately, he stumbled by it. But even though all the cultures around them had polygamous marriages, and it was socially correct in that time to uh, have polygamous marriage, nowhere has God okayed a polygamous marriage. Jesus talks about this in Matthew chapter 19. So Sarai gave away something that was hers to not give away. And that was the intimate relations between her uh, and Abram. She gave those uh, to Hagar. We see that in verse 4. Abram in verses 4 through 6, because of this rash decision, Abram had unrest in his home. An innocent party was dragged into the struggle of others in Genesis 16 and verse 2 by the name of Hagar. She was innocent in this struggle. And this also caused a stumbling block for her 
Because in Genesis chapter 16, verses 4 and 5, we see where Hagar acted unbecomingly towards Sarai. And then in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 6, this evolved Sarai acting unbecomingly toward Hagar. So as you can see, this is a very valuable lesson for you and I. And, and once again, that is the idea that impatience can lead to us making a rash decision and rash decisions will bring consequences just as it did here for Sarai and Abram. But I want us to go to James chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. What is God's expectation for you and I concerning the decisions that we make? Notice what the inspired James tells our brethren in the congregation of Jerusalem. He says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Christians are not to be a people that act rashly. And that's what we see here in James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. And I would like to look at this in three points this morning. Number one, rash talk can not only negatively affect us, but it could neg negatively affect those around us and cause them to make a rash decision. Number two, a rash decision can lead to consequences that cannot be taken back nor easily forgiven. And number three, acting rashly is not of righteousness, but it is a product of sin. Let's go to the first point. Rash talk can not only negatively affect us, but it could negatively affect those around us and cause them to make a rash decision. Why would James exhort the Christians who were reading his letter to be swift to hear and slow to speak? Well, notice with me Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18. It says, There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Or if you're looking at the New American Standard, ESV or NIV, and I like this rendering better, but the tongue of the wise promotes healing. A rash tongue is going to do nothing but stir up consternation in, an, in a problem that somebody might be having themselves personally or a problem that they could be having between you and that other person. So if we are slow, quick to hear, and slow to speak, we're going to think before we talk. And this will help, help us from going in making rash discussion. I'll get it out here in a moment. Okay, Proverbs 14 and verse 16. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. Now let's correlate this with Sarai's predicament. Okay, Sarai thinks the, one, the only thing that she can control herself is this idea that she can give Hagar into the hands of Abram because that, after all, is socially acceptable. But something to think about is God did not give her that command. That command did not come from God. That idea came from the mind of Sarai. And even though her intentions were positive, they still did not match with what God's will was for Abram and Sarai. So rash talk can not only negatively affect us, but it could negatively affect those around us and cause them to make a rash decision. So as we see, Sarai became a stumbling block to her husband. Now let's look at the second point. Rash decisions can bring about a consequence that we can never take back. You know, one of the lies that some children are told are sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never harm me, that is a lie. Because words can have a lasting impact on those whom we direct those words to. And also, 
our words reflect our character, even either in a positive way or a negative way. Notice Proverbs 25 and verse 8. The case is made by the inspired man of wisdom. Do not go out hastily to argue your case. Otherwise, what will you do in the end when your neighbor humiliates you? If you've ever been humiliated, then you know that it's hard to live down. And depending on the situation, sometimes you never live it down. So it's important that we are careful with our decisions when interacting with other people, whether it be our family or with those around us, so that we can have a Christ-like character and continue to demonstrate Christ living in our lives. And notice Genesis chapter 4 and verse 10 in one of the most tragic passages we find in the book of Genesis. Cain made a rash decision. And guess what? Once he slayed his innocent brother Abel, that's all there was. Notice what God said. And God said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Notice what God is telling Cain. Because of Cain's rash decision, he has done something that can never be taken back. He took the life of his brother. And God is bringing that to his attention. So when we get impatient and when we get into what's called the heat of the moment and, and we're tempted to make that quick decision, a rash decision, let us do what James is exhorting us to do. And let's be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because rashness is a product of sin. And when we give in to impulse and we, not, and we do not allow our faith to guide us, it will cause sin to come into our lives. And this is a problem. Notice in Romans 14 and verse 23, Romans chapter 14, there was a consternation between the Christians who had converted from being a Gentile and Christians who had converted from Judaism. And the Christians that converted from Judaism would not eat the meat sold in the Roman square because those meats came from animals that were sacrificed to pagan deities. So the consternation was the Jews said the Gentiles shouldn't be eating this meat. And the Gentiles said, well, it doesn't matter. God made it clean. And, and there was a debacle. There was a struggle between these brethren. So notice how Paul settles it here in verse 23. He says, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. And this is the point that Paul is making. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Whenever we act in a, in a rash way, that is not our faith talking. That's the flesh talking and the products of the flesh, as Paul discusses in Romans chapter 7, is in fact sin. And whenever we fall into that trap, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35, notice the exhortation here of the writer, therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. So when we fall into that sin, we're actually casting away our confidence in our salvation, our confidence in where we will spend eternity. No wonder Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, when he talked about do not worry, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But when we act in impatience and impulsiveness and do things rashly, we're not seeking first the kingdom of God. We're seeking for our own human gratification. And it is because of this that sin separates us from God. Isaiah 59 and verse 2 teaches, but Paul makes it very clear and relevant in Romans 6 and verse 23 when he says the wages of sin is death. So this is something that we have to watch, isn't it? Christians are not to be a people that act rashly. Rash talk 
can not only negatively affect us and our faith, but it could negatively affect those who are struggling in their faith and also affect those who don't really have a faith. And we don't ever want to be guilty of allowing our talk to drive, to drive an unbeliever away from giving Jesus a chance. Secondly, a rash decision can lead to consequences that cannot be taken back nor easily forgiven. And so that's why we want to be quick to hear and slow to speak. And then thirdly, as we end this morning, acting rashly is not of righteousness, but it is a product of sin. When we act rashly, it is because we are listening to our flesh and not walking by the Spirit. So as we close this discussion this evening, I would like to ask you, as you reflect upon your life, have you made some rash decisions? Are you haunted with decisions that you wish you could take back, but you know that you can't? Well, if you seem to be haunted by that, I don't want, to be, I don't want you to be haunted with that further, especially if you've repented of that. But what I want you to do is to be thankful that we have been justified by Jesus Christ. His blood has washed that sin away. Not only does the blood wash our sin away, but Hebrews also tells us that our conscience is made clean as well. And so if you find those memories haunting you, don't allow them to haunt you any longer. Because if you've, if you've repented and if you're living a different life than you were living when you were making those rash decisions, that's all covered. And it continues to be covered by the blood of our Lord. So if there's any way that we can encourage anyone that is watching this video this morning, if we can pray with you and pray for you, we would love to do that with you. Maybe there is one watching that you would like to learn how to become a Christian, and we would love to help you become a Christian as well. Please let us know. And until we meet again, I bid you a very excellent and pleasant good morning. We're going to close out this morning's video service with uh, I know the Lord will find a way for me. We'll sing this and then we'll have closing prayer. I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way for me. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will find a way for me. The Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. The Lord has said, Preach the word to all the world. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will find a way for me. Won't it be grand? this morning in this internet worship service and we pray that your week will go well we have to recall that this is just the first day of the week and we have another six to glorify our Lord and to be the reflection of Jesus in this world 
So I would like to close our service this morning by reading with you uh, in 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk, walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If you bow with me, we would close our service with a prayer. Great and loving Father, majestic, mighty, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the creator of all, and we are so grateful that you have given us an opportunity to praise you this morning collectively. We recognize, Father, that the journey we will take through the remainder of this week more than likely will be um, individually alone and not as a group. So we just pray, Father, that you will descend upon us and draw us near, hold us close, and keep us safe from the evil one's advances. We know that any advantage we give him, he will take and use against us. And we pray, Father, that we will not only be kept safe through this week, but that we will be able to walk in such a way that uh, we can reflect Jesus to those around us who might be searching and lurking for the truth. We ask, Father, that you present to us and place within our grasp opportunities that will match our grace gifts that we might bring you and your Son glory. It's in his name, Father, that we pray. Amen.